Hello everyone, and welcome back to another session of Bloodborne PvP and another weapon showcase. This time I am using the Church Pick, which is one of my favorite weapons from the DLC. Now, as I'm sure you guys have expected, this is a weapon I have used pretty extensively and am definitely a big fan of. So in a way, I might be a little bit biased towards it, but that said, this is a really good weapon with a lot of really good things about it. So, we'll get started on some of those in just a minute. Now, stats required to wield this weapon are 9 Strength and 14 Skill. It has a D Scaling in Strength, a B Scaling in Skill, and a C Scaling in Arcane. So, it's definitely more of a skill weapon without a doubt. So, I'll probably actually need to make a new build that's more skill focused, just so I can use this thing a bit more often and a bit more reliably. Now that said, the physical base damage of the weapon is 176, and for me, with my average blood gems in it, the attack rating is about 420. So that's about average as far as weapons go. That said, this weapon actually has a pretty decent swing speed to it, so, you know, that's kind of hard to complain about. So the first form of this weapon, it's got some medium speed attacks, the R1s are a thrusting attack followed by two slashes, one sweeping and one angled slash, and then a fourth attack being another thrust. Oddly enough, all of those attacks deal only thrusting damage, including the slashing ones, so I don't, I don't know why that is, don't ask me, but that's just the damage type that they have, so it is what it is. Other than that, its R2s are going to be a slower speed, understandably, and those are a strong thrust, and that's strong without even charging the attack fully. Now when you do charge the attack fully, the charged R2 deals an upward slash, which is pretty damaging. That's kind of awesome. Now, the big benefit of this form though, and as strange as it sounds, it's actually the uh, transform attack. It's a wide, about 180 degree slash, and it's got a really good stagger. And when I say a really good stagger, I mean a really, really good stagger. So, I tend to overuse that attack a lot, in all honesty, but, you know, it's good, so why not? Well, why not is because you get a little predictable and it's easy to punish, but more on that later. So, as long as we're talking about the second form. The second form R1s, it starts with an overhead chop, followed by two sweeping R1s. So, the first attack, it's good for narrow areas, sort of like the set of stairs that's in the area I'm fighting in. If I get pushed down that stairs, going for that R1, resetting, going for the R1 again, is really, really viable and works very well, actually. Now, the slashing attacks that follow are where this weapon's crowd control abilities come from, so you can do some really, really good work in PvE, especially with this weapon. It's got those very, very wide attacks, about 180 degrees each way, and they're fast, which is the big benefit to it. They have a very good speed to them. So, that said, uh, makes it a little difficult for enemies in PvP to sort of deal with it. They can't really out-trade you in some cases, and that's a good thing. It's really a good thing. So other than that, the R2s, if the charged R2 first off is an overhead swinging pancake, and the follow-up to that, because it does actually have a follow-up, is sort of a upward slash sort of thing. And that's good for hitting people who are dodging sideways on wake up. You can actually unlock and aim it very reliably and very easily. And even if you don't, it's got fairly good tracking on that attack, so it's okay. Now, with this form, the L2 attacks it has are awesome, and you'll see me using them a lot. They're just a really, really fast swing. Goes about 90 degrees starting on your left, going to the right, and it's about the same speed as your one-handed R1 attacks. It's a little weak but it has really good stagger, and in a few of the fights you'll see me just completely spam away with the L2 just to stagger someone who's trying to outspam me. It's a very fast attack, so even against this guy with his Chikage, he's trying to R1 spam me, but my L2s are just too fast for him. And because it gives good hyper armor and has that good stagger, well, it just doesn't work too well against, uh, you know... Well, I mean to say it doesn't work too well for your opponents. It works very well against them, for you. You know what I mean. You mean what I know. It's all good. So, aside from all of that, you know, the L2s are all well and good, but on their own, they're not very damaging. So, 
That's where combos come into play, of course. Because those attacks are very good at keeping pressure on, they don't use up too much stamina, and they can allow you to extend your combos. So an R1 into L2 combo is really reliable if you unlock to do that L2 especially just to catch them as they dodge, because most people will dodge sideways against this thing for whatever reason. I haven't quite figured out why they do that yet, but it's a thing that they do, so might as well take advantage of that. So as far as any other combos are concerned, pretty much any attack followed by the second form L2, due to the speed that it has, will catch a lot of people off guard, and that's a good thing. Other combos, you've got your L2 starting off, followed by an unlocked R2, which is very effective if the opponent is strafing sideways. Really, if your opponent is going sideways in any way, shape, or form, this weapon has a lot of attacks that can catch them, which is a good thing. It's a very good thing. Now, cons of this weapon, of course, there are going to be a few. And first and foremost, I would say that the damage output is a little bit low in comparison to some other weapons, but in my opinion, the speed that it has on a lot of attacks actually makes up for it. Other cons aside from that would be the fact that its range in the two-handed form, in the secondary form rather, is not all that spectacular. It doesn't compare to the Hunter's Axe, for example. It's shorter than that. Its range is more comparable to, say, the Kirkhammer, I'd say. That's a good example. And not even in the second form. The Kirkhammer in the first form, with its R2 attacks, has about the same range as the, um, as the R1 attacks of this weapon in its first form. So, you know, its range is definitely not something to write home about, but it's useful and it's good enough. So, it is what it is. Other than that, you know, I really can't come up with any cons aside from that. Um, a few other pros, the transform attack going from the second form to the first form. It is short range, but it's got a very heavy stagger and deals some pretty nice damage. So that's really good. And if you go and do two transform attacks in a row going from second form to first form and back to second, especially if you unlock on the second transform attack, that can be very devastating. Speaking from experience, I have done easily 900 plus damage on doing that and taken out some phantoms that were summoned in. So it works very well and, you know, definitely a good thing. Speaking of ganking, actually, be sure to unlock if you're being ganked, without a doubt. Be sure to unlock because they'll try and get around each side of you. It's just a general good strat to get on each side of a person if you're in a 2v1 and you are the two. So, if they do that, unlock, just R1, R1, spin around, spin around, spin around with your R1 attacks. It works very well. So, that's the last little tip I've got as far as that's concerned. But otherwise, you know, that's all I've got for this weapon. So, this is actually the last fight in the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, found it helpful in one way or another. So, please like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And I will see you all next time.